Ahoy, 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 everyone. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Oh, my goodness. How exciting. We've got, uh, it's Wednesday, and what an exciting Wednesday it's going to be. I am Good so excited about this. morning, Tricky Lug. And yes. everyone else. There you go. Well, every, oh. everyone who's here is kind of Tricky Lug, right? Yes, everybody who Just comes being is here, Tricky Lug. Think? Tricky Lug is a... Is a a worldwide, uh, it, you know, it is international for it sure. Is international, <laughs> absolutely. So, golly, well, we we've got uh, some fun, exciting things to go. Mm -hmm. The first, uh, I mean, like the big thing, and we'll be inviting him on in a few minutes after we do our little news segment. But yeah. uh, today we have Ben Alder, the fan Yay. designer of the. There's the one, Winnie the Pooh. That's idea a, set. That, I guarantee you that's a green tree up there. It is a green tree. <laughs> Our green screen is wreaking havoc with it at the moment. But I want everybody Lucas to check Stone out. Doesn't have that problem. Our awesome backdrop by Lana Zaccardi. From our from our backdrop contest or not contest but a challenge, yep. which was great. So we love that. Thank you so much. It's so that. colorful and look at all those. I, there's like dots with it's three very dimensional stars up there. It's very cheerful. It is very very cheerful, which we we like cheerful around here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, why don't we? Uh, well, we've got some news first of all. So okay. we'll talk about the Lego news now. This is um, our first official like news we're bringing you directly from the land and now i know a lot of you uh, of y'all have seen this stuff already but i'm just saying you know all um, the news that's fit to blab it's news 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 it's here. news it's news 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 and i'll say this we're gonna go more into this um late on Sunday. We're going to have soon. a more in-depth conversation about this on Sunday. But for right now, let's just mm -hmm. quickly look at uh, this. Well, this will be the so, sort of Cliff's Notes version. This is the Cliff Notes version. So this is Wicked. our, um, <laughs> this is the big, uh, this is the big news from this week. Lego Video is dropping a bunch of new sets. Now, I, I just want everybody to know this. I'm just going to say this right off the bat because I am so excited about this and also disappointed because uh -oh. everybody else in the world is going to get this two months before the U.S. So oh. you'll have it for a long time. OK, so um, I, I have a strong suspicion they will not run out. They, they're not going to run out. No, but, you know. That's a long time to wait while I everybody know. puts the awesome pictures up on Instagram of all their great video minifig mocks. And, you know, we're months behind. How um, long can I wait for a pink panda? I know. Well, so that is a pink gummy bear. And I'm pretty oh, sure that's, that's a right. transparent pink head, which I am kind of freaking out about because you know how much I love gummy bears all right so and, and translucent lego and so these are the so these are the bandmates these are the ones that are going to come in the loose boxes all right um and this is going to be well check that out that's 36 new album cover art tiles there. yes yes right so we've got we've got a bunch of new beat bits and these are again the bandmates that will come in the boxes and this is one of the new uh beat boxes not to be confused with bandmates now beat boxes are the little mm -hmm. squares that we got before there's this rock and roll dragon which you i know, love i'm pretty sure i had that ripped up t-shirt in the 90s i think you still have it I just don't wear it. <laughs> it's a good thing. Hey, Sai O'Connor, how's it going? Good to see you. Um, we've got this is going to be another beatbox. The fairy. Those Look at those wings. wings. Ah! And I love the she's got like a Scooby Doo color scheme going on with her outfit with that turquoise and lime green. Um, and if you noticed over here, um, there's another oh no she's in another one sorry there's another fairy with pink wings so we're going to get two kinds of these all right um so then we've got these new sets that are stages we've got um here's our blue um gummy bear minifig with the transparent blue head and that mermaid uh color or that mermaid hair piece that we love so much in pink i just love these stages because i think they're not tied to any kind of other than the fact that there should be like 
a focus at the center and maybe some speaker kind of things. Mm -hmm. They can go cuckoo with with color and design. And well, they, they have, have and they have. Right. So here's another one. Look at that gold hair piece. <laughs> like, That's look pretty at cool. That gold hair piece um, with the sort of like shade side. You know, there's a there's a a pirate punk mermaid who's got that same hair, but in coral <laughs> it's in coral everybody no so i was just thinking how like maraid is going to be able to make her own like a really good sig fig now with hair that's like hers because she's got that oh, like, shade yeah. on one side and the really long hair i think it'll be awesome. i was thinking that hair would look really good on gamora uh very sassy on gamora um so here's uh this one now this one's great so we've expanded the the unicorn line now this one's got the purple a purple unicorn with an amazing like 70s jumpsuit thing going on and can we just talk for one second about these transparent clear wings that the unicorn is sporting transparent clear wings i will angel wing style i will just say this again transparent <laughs> clear i think wings i think my fortress of solitude just got a lot fancier right right and tech <laughs> very good very good so um, is this this is like a bunny bunny band so no I it's mean, a unicorn band so they all have different and we will go over this on sunday but they all there's all kinds of different sub genres oh. within the video genre like a bunny backup here's singer. the here's the pirate one we further the pirate line with the with a black shark a pink kraken which is amazing that headpiece is just ridiculous and then we have our punk pirate mermaid with tattooed arms the torn shirt and i was we were looking at it yesterday her her whole outfit with that little um her little uh tied up scarf around her waist with a safety pin, a chain, and she's wearing a fishnet. And a piece of fishnet. And a piece there. of fishnet because she's like, I'm not having the fishnet. I'm going to, I will break out of it and then wear it. As and, and that Kraken is like raising the roof with <laughs> their ten tentacles. With the tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping that we will get this um, Kraken um, and this hairpiece in another color uh, later in the line. So now this one, this is weird. This is the only one where they didn't actually include the figures on with the stage. Oh, and I just wanted to point out mm -hmm. that's a pirate ship <clears> stage. <throat> you can't see it very well, but our, you know, our own Yano did an amazing pirate stage with the last yeah. um, ones that came well, out. I see the skull and the crow's nest. So all yep. of this would work with, with the AR functions of video too, right? So it'd be yes. all very, those stages must be very lively. Yes. With the figures dancing around. Um, and then we've got, and I love this vampire on a motorcycle down here, by the way. So this is the, so the are those go -go platforms. This is the most expensive one. Yes. Those are dancer platforms. Um, and it's going to come with these four minifigs, one from each of the different lines. Okay. So, um, there's like the, I, I don't know what they're all called. The only ones that I remember that they're called is fairy folk because of course, um, and then there she is with uh, with those pink wings and the pink hair. And then the other one, <laughs> I know, is K-pop. And it's K-P-A-W-P. P-A-W. Because it's all like little animals. And I love Trent Reznor over there, too. Oh, the, you mean uh, you mean Gene Simmons? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, with the, he's got and the, the, and and he's tongue, got the tongue and he's got the, <laughs> like the, the wiggly, flamey eye, um, eyes of a like, total Gene Simmons who's not Gene Simmons. So um, I am so in love with k-pop like i just love the name it's just so ridiculous now <clears throat> excuse me like i said we are going to go more in depth on all of this stuff on sunday but we just wanted to kind of share to kind of wet your whistle uh, uh a little yeah. bit for the um for sunday show and to you know get the news out on time if you will um so yeah we will uh we'll be looking at those on sunday with our panel because i'm Ooh. sure everyone will have opinions and oh i even i have opinions we're gonna have certified music guy jake studs who if you don't know jake he is an awesome guy that i do the twitch uh raid train with he's mm -hmm. uh wonderful guy he'll be joining us on sunday as we talk uh, more in depth about about these
So there you go. That is um, all. The well, news. I have ideas. And the more I see these figures, the more I like them. Yeah, I do, too. I really. And, you know, I think this is going to. Um, wow. Our, we've got some funky camera going I know. on today. I don't know what's going on. Um, it's back to the old days. Um, so. Uh, yes, but very, very exciting. We've got, um, I, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is the wave that's going to get people on board with video. I think, I think people so. were not on board with it in the beginning. Well, at first I was like, an app? Do I really want to play with an app when I'm playing with my Lego? And then I thought of them as CMFs, and suddenly the whole world changed. I was like, right. these are the most colorful, amazing CMFs. Yeah, well, they've, and see, that's the things like they, you know, we talk about, when you play a video game, like you can always tell where the company, like you've only got so many pixels to spend on your video game. So like, where are you going to put those pixels? Is right. it in character this design? This company made the eyes look really real. Right, exactly. <laughs> is, it the back, is it the backgrounds? Like what's it going to be? And in this and then in this particular case, they chose to spend their pixels on the minifig design. Yay. And it's, and in my opinion, stunning. I think they're just, I think they're just beautiful. So excited to see so many new pieces coming out uh, uh, and like that there. Well, what do you think? Should we say hi to everyone? Should we? I think we should say hi to everybody. I'm going to say hi to everybody. And then we are going to have um, our special guests guests on. So, yeah, let me just get over here because, you know, it takes me a minute to get to the screen where we can actually say hi to everybody. I love how colorful our background is. I do, too. It's very it's very video. You know, we could do one with with all those um, the. What are they called again? The video bits, the beat bits, the beat bits. Oh, yes. I'm surprised Brickworm hasn't done a whole beat bits uh, a quilt yet, but It'd be like a tricky bricks record shop. Um, so. All right. So I just wanted to say hi. Albert mm-hmm. Lee is here. Brickanista. How's hi, it going, Naomi? Naomi? Um, hope your head is better. Uh, Brickham's Den is here. Bubs and Lava Bat. Chris, Chris I, I am, am your, your person. person. Hi, Ben Chalice. <laughs> That's uh, another uh, in a long line of names. Uh, Darren Siegfried is here. Debo Bricks. Delicious Foods is here. How's it going? Thank you so much. I'm our newest uh, Patreon uh, supporter. Thank you, Delicious Foods. Uh, Fabby Fan MKE is here. Gary Mullane, the Griebling Wizard. Hooded One is here. That, I'm that hooded one. That is hooded up one. early. Um, uh, I'm Bored Toys. How's it going, Kevin? How's good to see you? Joel of He of Many Names, Marbella. Yano River Blue. Marilyn Parmley. Parmley and the Parmleys. How's it going? Uh, Matthew Builds Bricks is here. Hi, Matthew. Mini Fig Chick, Mini, Mini Fig, Fig Nick, Nick, Monica Berry, and Moto. Uh, love that list. And, and Ms. Ms. Slow Brickta. Uh, Patrick Wismer is here. Patty Sharon. Hi, Patty. How's it going? Oh, hi, Patty. Um, let's see. Rob Zaccardi and the Zaccardi's Lana, Elena, and, and Vanessa. Vanessa. Uh, Robin Eklund. Shane Levan. Ahoy, hoy, hi, Shane. Shane. Uh, Smoke Up Johnny is here. Tech Productions. So good to see you, Tech. Uh, the Hornburgers, the Hornburgers are here. Ahoy, hoy, Hornburgers. Uh, we've got, uh, when I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. Ahoy, hoy, Hornburgers. There you go. Um, Wilfred is here. Bonsoir. And, and Zach, Zach Martinez. Martinez. Good to see everyone. And, and I know somewhere, somewhere yeah. out there, Kim Zarakino. I know she's got a lot going on in life right now. So uh, we may not see her um, for a few it's, weeks, but she'll be back. It's a busier world. It I'm is a so busier world. glad we get to spend this time together. Oh, hi, hi, Johnny Cat. Good to see you. Um, oh, yes. Oh, Patrick. Thank you for reminding me mm. about that. So exactly. if you haven't already seen it online, there is a huge hubbub going on because one of these videos sets has what appears to be an upside down like in a build (laughs) one by five plate what one by five wow you know what that means that means no more searching for one by threes that means now you get to spend all that time searching Searching for for one one by by fives fives. (laughs) (laughs) darn you one by fours distracting me you know what it's like oh i found one oh it's a one by six hey jake sadovich is here alexander 23 how's it going oh and i just wanted to mention real quick Mm -hmm. uh that Hang on, I'm going to pop off the screen real quick. All right. Um, 
Oh, right? for a really very good reason. So yesterday on the Twitch show, I started filling out, if you were with us before, this is our new um, Twitch subscriber board, which is a thing they do on Twitch. And I found this hilariously weird scrapbook from the 50s. And what happens is when you subscribe to the Twitch channel, um, you get your name written in the book. And you can see there, Mevitz Bricks' name is written underneath of the you get to be I, part of pop culture history. Oh, part of pop culture history. But I wanted, to, and I wanted to open up to all of our friends, anybody who's you know donated uh, in a super chat or donated to us on um, on uh, with through our Patreon program or uh, through Venmo. Mm -hmm. Come on over to the Twitch stream and have your name written in the book. That's where we do that. Um, so would love to uh, have y'all come yeah, it's come got, by. Got Will Rogers in there. It's got Groucho Marx. There's <laughs> hot <lots>. dogs. <laughs> There's people sitting having a picnic. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So um, it is, I think, high time mm -hmm. that we invite our um, our special guest on today. Yep. Everybody, we are so excited to have him. And I have to say, I am truly, truly honored because this is the first time he's done like a live a live stream show like interview ever and also to talk about the um to talk about the uh the set that he and his family designed together so everybody please give a warm tricky lug welcome to the stream ben alder hi ben hi, hi. Ben. thanks for having me on <laughs> good to see you how are you yeah really good thank you very good very good so well so where are you uh joining us from today um, believe it or not, this is my dining room, but, um, yeah, rather taken over by Lego. <laughs> us, us too. Us too. And now our dining room is a TV studio and a build room. So yeah, I get it. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. Well, it's great to see you. Um, thank you so much for, for coming and, uh, and talking with us today. I know everybody's been really, really excited about this. So, and I'm really excited to start putting the, the set together. I know. I haven't, we, we haven't assembled it at yeah, all. We got our set here. We've got our instruction book out. And we're, um, I, we'll see how much we get to build because, of course, we're going to be paying attention to, uh, to what we're all doing here and chatting about. But let's kick mm -hmm. things off with a couple of features. And I know Ben has got some, is joining in with our features today, which I'm so excited about. Um, let's start off with pins. Uh, what have you got for us today, Ben? I'm going to put you on the big oh, screen. Don't be surprised. You're probably going to guess my pins. Yay! Yay! Oh, funny enough, awesome. I kept in theme today. Very good. Very good. Um, All right. Well, a rather old pin. This one's from childhood many years ago. Actually, my wife's childhood. So, um, yeah, one of our favorite pins that we have. That so is awesome. Terrific. Well, we are we're in theme, too, and we all pitch different characters. So this is perfect. Um, Richard, why don't you go first? OK, I've got um, let me see if I don't drop it here. Featuring Owl. Let's get him in focus here. Clicky's shall we gonna come around and help us focus here? You think? No, he's kind of being a jerk. That's OK. You can tell. There we go. He's Owl. And I've got. Rabbit, which is. Rabbit is so concerned. He, it, well, it's sort of appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that. I'm always concerned about I think something. Owl was often concerned too. Uh, yes. Just sort of in a more conservative way. Like, just, <laughs> you know, he was pretty chill about it all. Um, all right. And then we are going to. Um, Oh, hooded one. I was going to wear my Tigger pin. It's one of my favorite pins, but he's. Um, Bouncing green. on a green background, yeah, which would so he would have looked like outer space. <laughs> <laughs> so also, we have got stickers. So Ben, I know you have some some favorite stickers to share with us. Why don't you show yeah, us those? Guys, can you guess these? Uh, a more modern set. Anyone know what that one is? Oh wait, I'm trying to. Is this the um? Okay. I'm not familiar with it, but is this from the Easter set with the carrot house? Yeah, exactly right. From the carrot house. Oh, very yeah. good. Yay. I was, I guessed. I haven't seen it. <laughs> the first time I've ever seen a, um, a two by six um, tile. 
Oh yeah. Tile before, so um, yeah, that's for the mat. So that's quite cool. Now I'm going to take a wild guess. Do you think Mel Caddick worked on that set? Uh, it is. It is highly likely. It is highly likely that she did. I would not be at all surprised. Well, we um, have stickers too, and we have stickers too, and our stickers are from Surprise, the Winnie the Pooh Lego Idea Set. <laughs> and so, I know um, here I will, we'll show this one first because there's two of them. So, like we always do, this um, this is from set two one three two six. Um, designed by uh, initially designed by Ben Alder, it came with five minifigures Tigger, Piglet, Pooh, Eeyore, and Rabbit, and bees. And bees. And now I know we talked about this when you were in our chat one day, Ben, but what's special about the bee sticker? Yeah, 100%. That's um, my children, my huge inspiration behind this set. So, um, it, there needed to be something special in there that could last forever more. So um, just to honor them, as you can see in their trails um, behind the bees, there's two little letters um, spelling out the trails. So you've got an E and a J. Oh, um, yeah. Um, Joshua and Elsie. So, um, yeah, they're very excited that there's two little bees living in a hundred acre wood um, with their little names on. So they're running around um, calling them two little bees, Joshua and Elsie bees. So um, <laughs> oh, That's so uh, adorable. Well, the, oh the bees are wonderful in the set too. So it just carries that through that fun animation. Well, and not only that, but like what an honor to like, not only do you get your like set made into a real set, but you get like initials from your kids, like immortalized yeah. on a sticker. And I know that like um, there's been, um, not a whole lot of people outside of the Lego designers themselves who have had their initials put into a set. So that's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, definitely that. They're so um, so made up about it. So yeah, it's really important to have them part of it because um, yeah, they're a huge help in the whole designing of it, the whole making of it. And so um, yeah, it's really important to have them involved. Awesome. So as, as the um, I'm curious the the point in the process in the ideas process where stickers come in. Were you able to suggest stickers? Yeah, I think what happens is it's sort of decided upon of um, what sort of sticker parts, what are printed parts, really, because um, some parts, as you can probably guess, like the um, honey pots, they've got a like, curved design on them, so to try and put a sticker on a, um, a honey pot is sort of near on impossible, um, whereas other parts are sort of a lot easier, like um, the book and like the tile, etc. So, yeah, so um, it is sort of discussed on which ones are sort of practical to um, use stickers, which ones need to be printed, etc. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so excited about the little bee tiles that are on that clear piece with the post. They're just so fun in the piece. Is that the um, ones on the, I mean the one by ones, uh, these ones to me? Yep. I love that little spinning. Sorry, I keep muting our mic because we're pouring pieces out. We want to deafen you with our uh, piece pieces pouring. clattering onto the ground. And also, of course, we want to be paying attention to you and not looking at the table. But I wanted to point this out. Here is the um, here is the the aforementioned honey pot with the label. Oh, that's great! Like, how cute is that? Adorable. As a kid, I always thought it was so funny that honey was misspelled. I know. I know. <laughs> Let's see another kind of kid I was, right? <laughs> oh, it, well, I whenever we would watch the special on Disney, like to me, the the height of hilarity was where he like gets stuck in the hole. And then Rabbit like is it so embarrassed that he like disguises Pooh's butt as like a moose hanging on the wall. He like sticks tree branches on and like draws a face. <laughs> I always thought that was so hilarious and weird. But um, cool. So let's talk a little bit about your um, your journey with this set. So now before you uh, designed this set, were you already making mocks? Like, was that something that was a regular part of your building? Yeah, certainly. Um, well, it all started off when I was really young. Um, as with every sort of little boy, little girl who love Lego making, etc. You sit there for hours with your parents making your own designs, etc. Um, and then um, slowly, um, other things in life took over. Um, but then um, about six years ago, I had a child, and um, my love for Lego sort of rekindled again. So um, then I started making sort of more of my own designs and. 
um, slowly making little builds for my children to play with. Um, so yeah, so I've um, yeah, I really enjoy making my own little builds. I you know I read that um, when when was it since um, I think Lego has been making Winnie the Pooh sets since like ninety nine, but most of them were Duplo sets. Did you are you familiar with the Duplo sets and and had yeah. you seen those before you started your model? Yeah, definitely. So we've got the Duplo sets, but Lego's never made um, Winnie the Pooh in sort of the Lego form. So we've had the sort of the Duplo sets, but that's sort of my inspiration behind it because um, my children are getting older and they wanted a set that we could sit and um, make our own little um, bedtime stories. So we'd sit and read it upstairs and then um, we wanted to sort of recreate it. So, um, yeah, as Disney, Winnie the Pooh and Lego are sort of massive in our world, they needed to sort of collide, really. So... And then the idea was born, really. So there I was, sat in the evening, sort of digitally creating it. So I made it on um, Brooklyn Studio to start off with, um, and slowly sort of pieced piece together on Brooklyn Studio, which gave me this sort of original idea. And then um, from that, I um, purchased the different parts from all over the world, and um, slowly they arrived, and then pieced it together. And um, yeah, the set was born. Wow. The, I mean, so now were you, you, I mean, obviously like the, um, the Disney movie, um, took from the original illustrations, like they, they heavily went with the illustrations from the books. Um, but yeah. of course they put their own spin on it. And this seems to be more based on the Disney, like obviously the Disney version, um, than, uh, the books. Now, were you, when you were initially building, what was your inspiration? Was it more the books or more the Disney stuff? Um, I'll probably say the books because that's what I remember from childhood. That's what I sort of read to my children. But then we did watch the Disney films. So, um, yeah, I'd probably say earing towards the books more, I'd say, um, were sort of the vivid memories that I've got in my head as I was sort of building it, really. Right. Well, it's, it's interesting because um, there are... I don't know. There's like a finite number of like books and things that are geared towards kids that really have um, like intense staying power, like really long staying power. Like Alice in Wonderland is one like Winnie the Pooh is, I think, even more so like, um, you know, like. I think people speak in like out of Alice in Wonderland in terms of being like an old, you know, like an older thing that people like, but Winnie the Pooh <laughs> seems eternal, like, like ageless. Like it doesn't matter. Like it's not like, you know, Alice in Wonderland is very frozen in that like Victorian era, you know, and, but, um, but Pooh seems to be absolutely timeless. And I just think that's so fascinating. Yeah, definitely. that. Definitely. that. Yeah. We love it. We love it still. Well, for, for me, um, Winnie the Pooh is so gentle, right? It's like, it's like the Mr. Rogers of adventure stories, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the terrible things happen. Like when Piglet is almost entirely surrounded by water, or I actually, I read that, um, I read that Piglet's, um, scarf was a reference to the blustery day did, did you make particular references to things that happened in particular stories throughout the build um yeah i think so there's sort of various different ones in it so you've got the balloon um you've got the balloon uh, so winnie the pooh's balloon um there's a day when he goes when he goes up into the um into the tree um to get honey um, right. That's a vivid memory of mine of one of the um, shows. So that was sort of really important to have that on. Um, and then there's a little locket inside. If you look inside, if you open up the back of the house, um, there's a little locket which is from one of the um, sort of movies. So yeah, there's little sort of Easter eggs hidden all over the um, all over the um, design. That's awesome. Now, was that now those were things that you included in your in, uh, initial design, or were some of those added by Lego? Yeah, yeah. Um, several of them were added by Lego, so it's sort of part of the process. So what happens was um, after it got to the 10,000, um, you then find out whether you've sort of made it or not. Um, and if you're selected, then what happens is you have um, regular meetings with them, online meetings, so you discuss everything and um, any ideas that I had, they had, um, and really chat over different things you could add to it just to bring out sort of the... Um, um, the playability, the um, sort of magic in it, really. 
Yeah, right there we go. There's Pooh on his balloon. <laughs> Love it. I'm the, I'm so, we we're just putting the minifigs together now. I'm like super into Piglet and um yeah, and I love Pooh and his balloon. Um so yeah, so you actually um you met with the designers and um you actually worked with our our uh, buddy Ilya. Um, yeah. who oh, is so one cool. of the designers. He's wonderful. Yeah, we, he, there's a picture of all of the, the Lego designers there. We, we met and, him after he had done Queen Whatever, right? Right. We met him at, a, at our local convention. Like, what a really great guy. I know he's done a lot of the Disney stuff, and there is a mm-hmm. adorable picture of you and your family in the instruction book, too. Like, wow, you were just... Um, no one will ever forget that you did this, which is just, which is just so amazing. Um, to be able to have your art um, be, you know, and like I said, Pooh is eternal. So people are going to be, you know, when, you know, 20 years from now, when people are paying a thousand dollars for this set, like in the box, um, you'll be that you'll be there. <laughs> Say for all of the things that you could have shown and all of the places that you could have um, focused, you focused exactly on this place in this way. How did you narrow all those stories down into just what you wanted to show um to be fair i think um winnie the pooh's house is the main thing that i remembered from my stories really that's the basis of it when he went up into the tree to get the honey um and his little cute house sticking out the back of the tree and um all his little things inside his little bed um the little clock the mirror and they're all sort of the main things that sort of i remember from it so um yeah it's sort of an obvious choice really and like i say making it for the kids i wanted something that was part of a lot of the stories so that we could sit and recreate them stories really. So um, yeah, that's, that's why the idea was designed as that. Now I know this is a, this has been a question from a lot of people. Um, and so I'm just curious to get your take on it. A lot of people were like, where's Christopher Robin? Why isn't there a Christopher Robin in the set? And my personally, my take on it was like that, Christopher Robin is really like the every kid. He's like the 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 reader's entry into the story. So really you can look at it in a way of like you are Christopher Robin and also yeah. it gives people a freedom to make their own. But I'm curious to like what how did that process go down? Yeah, hundred percent. Um Christopher Robin would be lovely to have it in there. Um, but there's a limit, unfortunately. As with any set, there's a limit of how many figures you can have. And um he was heavily discussed. Um, but unfortunately if we'd have included him, one of the other figures would have to go. So um yeah, it's really difficult when we were discussing figures, etc., who to include, who not to include. So um yeah, it's decided not to include Christopher Robin. There's um yeah, the um, builder becomes Christopher Robin and as we're creating our stories and you've you're sort of planning the figures, etc. You are Christopher Robin creating the sort of magic behind the scenes, really. So yeah, so it's difficult. So, um, we'd have loved Christopher Robin and Rue and Owl and um, yeah, many others that people have been saying to us. But um, unfortunately, there's a limit on how many they can include in one set. Yeah. In the Personally, I'm going to be using the owl from the Sleeping Beauty set as as owl because you know, they have a similar, you know, that Disney owl look. <laughs> and, and I may <laughs> introduce yeah. a Friends doll or Technic figure as Christopher Robin. Yeah, see, I think a Friends mini doll would be a great Christopher Robin. I think mean, like the scale would be sort of perfect, I think. And several you can just make from current parts which I think from memory, that's Scooby-Doo's head, a um, um, Scooby-Doo's hair. Then you've got Trickster's arms, which are the part printed. And oh, then yeah. Think, oh, yeah. Is that Finn from the Lego Dimensions? Yep. So we have got a little Christopher Robin that the children have added in. So, um, oh, yeah. Nice. That's great. That's great. So I'm, I'm curious. I don't know. Um, I don't know that <laughs> I would know how to put this into words. Yes. I'm Christopher Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure I would know how to put this into words, but you said that you made the set for your kids and for your family to enjoy. And the ideas set is 18 plus. So how what do you think about the difference in that? What did you put in for kids and and did that change in making a set for adults, or that's maybe what the adults love about it? Yeah, I think so. They they said to me when we were talking to Lego, what's important? And to, for me, it was really important that it was playable as well. So obviously, um, that was really important. Um, but 
the Lego ideas, the 18 plus range, I think most of the Lego ideas now have been 18 plus. I think the last several of them have, haven't they? So um, I think it's the fact it's the um, sort of build, um, the level of sort of difficulty on the build is sort of aimed at um, mm. sort of a, it's a, a more tricky build compared to some of the other builds, I think. And that's, I think that's how it's sort of pitched really. So um, yeah. I so that really tree's going to be tricky. Oops. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's very built down. So um, it's very, um, yeah, when you sort of break it down um, into the little parts, it's not too bad. But there's some um, sort of lovely detail down the bottom, as you can see on the mounds at the sides. You've got the... Um, well, I like the, love the way the roots come down. Yeah, we have our box. We're still in mid-build. We, we'll, well, we've built the minifigs now. <laughs> Well, so actually, this is a perfect chance. I've seen a lot of pictures of the ideas set, but I've never yeah. seen your set. You want to take us yeah, through sure. yours? Yeah, sure. So what I've done is what I'll do. Is oh, you guys, this is an exclusive. You're seeing it here first, the down. original model. <laughs> if I stand them next to each other, can you see that one? And then if I bring them in, it gives you a good comparison of size. Um, so they're fairly similar in size um, mm -hmm. or looks-wise. They've sort of got the general basis. Um, they can the, main, oh. the greebled roof. Oh, look at your sweet window frame. I love crooked. the window frame. That is just so delightful. Wow. Um, so with mine, it doesn't open up like that, but obviously with the idea set, it opens up and reveals the whole of the inside. How fun! Yeah. What a great addition, I gotta say. I, well, but I'm also a fan of things. If you've, seen, if anybody knows my things, I love things that open up like a dollhouse like that. It's just, it's a favorite. And I think what's nice is you can display it sort of 360 degrees, so um, it's totally enclosed, but it has got the sort of playability that you can open it. So um. You know, I think wow. the sort of the natural color palette you used reminds me of the original drawings in the books. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I think I definitely think that the color palette that we've gone with in sort of the final design is sort of gives it that more um sort of Disney element to it. I agree. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and, and your door frame with the with the um snot technique with those tiles as well to just make it crooked is so nice. So I'm curious. Um, so Wilfred's asking uh, if um, are there some things that you like best about your original model? Like, are there some things that you really were particularly proud of when you were building it? And I love your little area for owl, by the way, above the door. Yeah. It's fantastic. Just to add him in. Um, to be fair, is it sort of things I prefer in sort of my original? Um, that's difficult because Lego involved me so much in the whole sort of design process of it. Um, so sort of every sort of big decision that was made, they'd regularly show me it. So sort of any sort of ideas that I had, any changes that I sort of wanted, I can sort of put forward to them um, to consider. Um, I was very pleased with how sort of my original came out. I like the house, how it came out in the back, et cetera, which, um, which they've kept um, sort of in keeping um, with it. Um, my main problem was keeping stability. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to build trees. Yeah, yes. they're so hard. We've had no. utter collapses before. Yep. Where the yeah. entire thing fell apart all at once. Mm. It's just trying to get that stability in it, isn't it? And making the leaves strong enough to stay on a tree, um, especially when little fingers are sort of playing with it, etc. or you move it, etc. So that was the main thing that I struggled with with my original build, to be fair. Um, so, yeah. Well, I think um, I think both models are marvelous. I just think you've done. Uh, so I, I, you know, I like um, it's something that Rich and Richard and I talk about a lot with our with our work is that like the the Lego version has like, of course, the Lego polish to it. Like and mm -hmm. but I we both love seeing models where we like to say like you can see the mark of human hands like you can see yeah. that a person put a lot of love and attention into a model that they made themselves i just i think it's i think it's wonderful it really, yeah, really I think it. it's taken it from that front room build to sort of a shop ready product really isn't it it's that next yeah. level, isn't it yeah um, and when i was doing the minifigures um the problem i had was oh, the problem, can you see them there? Yeah, the problem oh, I had yeah. was... Oh, oh look at Tigger! Your brick-built yeah. Tigger is genius. 
Yeah, because there's no sort of current parts that Lego do that was anything similar to Tigger. So, um, yeah, I had to make them all. So, um, and uh, Pooh was a panda. So um, I carefully removed all the print um, from a panda headpiece. And then I popped it in plastic dye in the, um, on the saucepan, on the hob, um, and then dyed it and then sprayed a lacquer on it um, to get the finish. Wow. It looks so good. It looks amazing. And then you, it looks like you did custom stickers or prints for Eeyore's face. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then his tail on the back as well. Let's see. Oh, that's awesome. You know, one of our, um, our regular Sunday panelist, Blair, was... He was like, I'm so disappointed that Eeyore's tail doesn't come off. And I was like, I mean, that would be great, but I can't imagine that that would be the first thing that got lost. Yeah. Like the minute you the how much it opened, it would like, which I guess is appropriate, but still, that would be, they'd have to include extras in there. <laughs> Thanks so His much for rotating. Thanks for rotating both of them together because I could s really see how they maintained the original contours, the way the tree comes off the house, the balance between the tree and the house. Yeah. You must have been so excited when you saw the figures for the first time. Uh, I can remember them um, sort of saying to me that they were going to do this sort of five new molds to me. And then I was just like, I'm coming off the sort of live call to them. It was just like, keep calm, breathe, keep calm. <laughs> and then sort of having to enter back into normal life, like nothing's, so sort of nothing's gone on. And sort of speaking to the wife and that, and just like, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's been extremely hard to keep a secret for a year. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's a big deal. Like new molds, that's a really, really big yeah. deal. Um, I wonder um, now with the um, like with the Eeyore one, that is like that's even one more step beyond because it's yeah. not like a regular minifig body with a head. It's like a whole new like it's a whole thing. Yeah, almost like a tiny big fig. Here, I'm going to put you back up here again. Can you hold him a little closer to the camera? There we go. Oh, it's so cute. The little yeah. stitching on his nose. And a little removable bow, bow as well. So sort of a compromise of sort of the tail not being able to come off. But yeah, the color out. is great. <laughs> wow. You know, I noticed they printed on on Tigger's tail too. Like there's a yeah, lot yeah. of detail. Yeah, all the way around. So, um, yeah, to print all the way around. Oh. And several of the um what is it? so several of them are dual molded as well so to give it sort of a sort of fuller color on the head so um the head inside is sort of dual molded so it's the two different um plastics together oh yeah. wow really nice well your original tigger was just great yeah agreed really it was really really fun i am um, let me see we've got some oh actually we are um actually this is a good a good place to pause. That's right, everybody. It is time for the pause that refreshes. It is that uh, it's that time of the day, everyone. Please welcome to the show our very special guest. It's Logan Cookie Time. Oh, you know, it's racing what, down the hall. That's Can not your in? entry door. Yeah. There we go. Stage Yay, center. Logan. Good job. There you go. All right. Say hi to Ben. Hi, Ben. Look, say hi. Look at that. I'm waiting for the Logan mini boy. Uh, although, actually, to be fair, the new uh, that okay, new poly bag one. looks just like him with a couple of uh, swaps. Sound of happiness. Yay, Yay Logan. We're so what a patient. good boy. You Logan cookie time. <laughs> Here we go. Yay, Logan cookie time. All right. There we go. That's what we have to do that every day, Ben, or they go crazy in the chat and we get in trouble. So, uh, um, and yeah. Well, Logan waits so patiently for that because he does. at the start of the show, <laughs> At the start of the show, he wants to come say hi to everyone. <laughs> it's true. Um, Logan is adorable. Heather, you are you are right. 
Um, and I gotta say, uh, oh, uh, Delicious Foods got a Logan and a Liz poly bag yesterday. Well, you know how much we love Liz um, here on the show. And I just wanted to remind everybody, we are in the middle of a two week build challenge right now. And the theme is Logan. And it was picked by um, Brickworm is the one who suggested that one. And uh, we, we picked it. You've got another week until that's due so yep. next thursday at 5 p.m your photos are yep. due and it can be whatever it doesn't have to be our logan although why wouldn't it be no, um, it, can, <laughs> it can be it could be wolverine yep. logan's run yeah those are the those are our go-to's logan berries that's what he's named after logan berries right it's true whatever you whatever that feels uh good to you but that's our challenge uh for this uh this two week and are so. we doing a work in progress on friday yes and this friday actually we are doing our very first work in progress workshop show. Uh, there is a Google form um, up on our website. If you have a mock that you're working on and you would like some constructive criticism, feedback on it, you can send it to us. Uh, and on Thursday, we will be picking a couple of projects to focus on. Uh, sorry, yeah, Friday. We, we may be able to, we won't be able to get to a lot of them yeah, because we, we want to go in depth. Yeah, depending on how many there are, but probably we'll pick like three or four to kind of go more into. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit about uh about the mock like what what might uh, what we really like what could use some improvement or maybe some changes um and everybody in the uh in the chat is welcome to join in as well just remember we will be respectful and kind and constructive criticism is always welcome so we're excited about that. So our, it'll be our very first time uh, doing something like that. So, all right, so, back to Ben. <laughs> not to put you, not to put you on the spot, Ben. I'm curious, as as someone who's had a successful Lego Ideas set, like some of those signposts, like when when you um, were you nervous for your first meeting with Lego about it? What yeah. I mean, what was that like? Yeah, it definitely is crazy because, um, yeah, I just like build Lego in my front room and in my dining room, my dining room. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just crazy because, um, yeah, going from just building in sort of your dining room to people who sort of inspire you really and sort of the big Lego builders and sort of various sort of designers. So, yeah, the first meeting, I remember it. And, um, yeah, it's a little bit like, uh, what my build? Uh, so yeah, it's still, um, it still seems strange. Um, and yeah, meeting them all, and they've been so lovely, and they really did make me feel welcome and part of the team. And um, yeah, I was very lucky to have worked with some amazing people. Um, I'm curious, how mm -hmm. long um, did the process take for you on Lego Ideas, from when you submitted the idea to when it got um, like it got your it got the votes, and then Lego did the did the choosing. Yeah, yeah. So I think I submitted it so two years ago, March, so just over two years ago, um, to Lego Ideas. Um, it then gained the ten thousand votes um really quickly in four months. Yeah, um, wow. awesome. Wow. Um, yeah, it's crazy. By the first end of the first week, I think it was up to like two thousand. So um yeah, that was astounding sort of thing to think that I was only gonna build it for my kids and then someone's like, Oh pop it on Lego Ideas. So I did. So I put other things on Lego Ideas before and um never really had sort of um any sort of big um sort of luck with it really. And so I hadn't really done this one for that. And then to get this one sort of go that far and then when it gets up to like two thousand, you're like, Wow, well, that's that's mad, isn't it? And then um it gets to five thousand. Um so yeah, that took four months. Um and then following that I then had to wait for a review um and then i think it was about a year later i think it was around february time so last year february um that it got selected um and then fairly quickly after that you hear from lego um you start meetings um and then you sort of have regular meetings to start off with you have um you have lots of meetings um and then as it goes on um so once all the big decisions are made it all then sort of um dies off a bit um and then I think it's sort of the final designs was sort of end of last year. Um, and then it's waiting for it to be made really to sort of be released what March time. Wow. So, yeah, somebody, had mentioned earlier, somebody had asked earlier what the lead time was between was between the the set getting finalized and it actually showing up on the shelves. That's yeah, it seems looking at sort of past ideas and that it varies a bit to be fair. Um, I think some of them are a bit quicker than others, and I don't sort of 
know what that depends on really but it depends on how many sort of mm. they've selected i guess how many they got in the process but um it's normally about a year i think from being selected to ended up on the shelves okay. currently about a year Oh, and also, by the way, there is another Lego Ideas uh, fan designer in the the chat right now. Jake Sadovich, who did the ship in a bottle set, is here uh, hanging out. So you guys have that in common, that process. <laughs> He's um, he, Jake's a great guy. Hey, had you had you shown this model, your model on um, at conventions? Like some people will take, um, you know, we we no ideas um, submissions where they've taken the model to many conventions and visited people and talked with them about it. What was it like for you? Yeah, unfortunately, COVID got in the way of all that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Really, it was my intention to sort of go around to some of the sort of UK ones and sort of meet some um, sort of various people. But yeah, unfortunately, COVID sort of stopped all that at the moment. So yeah, I haven't been able to. So this process, I'm sorry that that happened, um, but this process has all happened really fast then. I, yeah. I always thought of leg, uh, of ideas as being a longer process, but it seems like this one really moved right along. Yeah, definitely that. So yeah, no, I'd say four months is, um, so yeah, it was all sort of put it on there and then four months later it was at the 10,000. So I didn't expect that. It was, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, so now once they um once it got the i can only imagine once that it got the votes and then between the that time and the time when they actually like did the picking of it was it just like i mean yeah. was it just something that you thought about like every day and they were like oh i wonder if i'm gonna get the email i know like when we were yeah. in the audition process for lego masters there was this there was a significant amount of time between when we finished the audition process and when they actually told us we were going to be on and it was just like yeah. an every day it's yeah. like all we could think about well, how I, was that for you yeah definitely that it's a long long way every day you're like oh perhaps tomorrow perhaps tomorrow and then another month goes by doesn't it and you're just like <laughs> yeah you just Everly hoping, checking your junk mail just in case you've missed something. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a long way. <laughs> you had them. Oh, it, just I remember when we were waiting after we had auditioned and before we heard back about Lego Masters, I was walking to work every day. You know, a portion of my commute was walking. And every day that I would pass this particular spot, it would come up in my head like, is it going to happen? Am I it, they've forgotten about me. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not going to happen. There's no way. And, you know, I would tell myself all these stories. Well, how, how exciting that it, it did happen. Well, and not only did it, you know, has it, uh, been uh, like, like, not only did it get made as a set, mm -hmm. but it's been like, <clears throat> it was like a mega, it's been a mega hit. Like I would call it a mega hit ideas project. Like it is sold it's hard out to find. everywhere. I was terrified that we weren't going to have a copy here to build uh, when you were here. I was just like, what are we going to do? I have to find, and I was eventually able to get one. Um, I actually had to go like not to a Lego store to, to get it. Uh, but I did end up, you know, we did end up getting one. So that must feel really good too. Like just knowing yeah. like, people are that into it that it's already just like sold out everywhere. Yeah, it's just unreal because I was really nervous before sort of the announcement is sort of, I know sort of some people can be quite critical over some of the sets that really, so you get very nervous over it to think that I've had such a huge part in this set and that it's been sort of my dream, my family's dream. And um, it is important what other people think about it and whether they get the same sort of happiness from it that I have and the love and the joy that we've had from this set. It's just been unreal. So to see other people having that sort of love and joy and when I get tagged on Instagram and Twitter with different people building it and their children building it with them, it just, um, yeah, it's just absolutely unreal. It's, it's genuinely amazing. Yeah. So um, I know, you know, we've you've mentioned this and we've talked a little bit about it, um, that your your family and your and, and your kids had a lot to do with helping this project along. So can you yeah. tell us a little bit about like what that process was like and what um, what sort of things that the um, like did the kids offer critique or did they say like, you know, m why don't you add this or change this or so what was their um, input on this? 
Yeah, definitely that. Um, so things like when you gave them sort of little parts to play with, um, it would show which parts fell apart, what needed to be stronger, which parts they liked playing with, um, how they wanted to change things, whether the bed was in the right place that they could get into it. So little things like that that they liked, um, sort of helping and changing um, the ideas set. Um, I'm sorry, my original set and like the tree. Originally, I had only put the um, sort of leaf part and then I added on the small leaves because um, I think my little boy mentioned one day that it wasn't sort of green enough. It wasn't tree enough. So there I sort of added in the um, extra leaves, um, the honey pots, the, the um, extra owls on. Um, and we um, printed out little um, flyers to go and pop through people's doors. So the kids love doing that. So you can probably imagine trotting around our little estate and popping sort of little flyers through people's doors and people coming out saying, <laughs> yeah, I'll wait for it. And then you'd get home and you'd sort of be watching Lego Ideas to wait for that sort of next number to drop up. And then, um, so yeah, quite exciting. And um, one other thing we'd done with the children was in the kitchen, we had a little board. Um, so every day we'd write how many votes we got um, and then the kids would be involved in that, wiping off the number and sort of watching that grow and how many more we needed and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's been quite a journey for us all. So, um, yeah, maybe. That's so that's just that's just so delightful, because I know that um, Richard and I consider ourselves very fortunate to have this hobby that we share together. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, you know, you see stories and hear things about, um, you know, my husband makes me keep all my Lego in the smallest closet. And right, exactly, like I'm not allowed to have Lego out in the house, and I'm not allowed to do, you know, like, and you know, because not everybody shares, you know, not all couples share the same interests and stuff. And the fact that you were able to um, have your whole family along on that journey mm -hmm. to me is just that's so heartwarming and delightful. I just I love hearing stories like that. That's so wonderful. My wife's really got into the Lego as well. So um, there's a special sort of thing for her inside. Her favourite colour is um, Dark Azor. So um, as you'll probably notice inside, there's quite a Dark Azor theme running through. So like the um, chair, the curtains are all in that colour because that's um, my wife's favourite colour. So um, just as a little thank you to her um, for her involvement, there's that sort of little hidden gem just to say, um, yeah, thank you for the support she's been really. Awesome. Um, so that, we, we've heard we've heard <laughs> about so sweet. We've heard yeah, about Lego designers um, in Billen, including their, you know, favorite signature color, colors. Their signature color into the piece like hidden somewhere. So it's great to hear about these Easter eggs that you left in there, too. Well, and just and how fun that um, you were because, you know, we we see when we build a lot of sets, we see a lot of those Easter eggs that the designers put in and how and how fun. But just like you've really left your mark on this set so um, so much like there's just so much of you and your family in it. And I think that is what um, well, it's first of all, it's very inspiring. I have to say. And mm -hmm. also it's just, I think that that, um, that pushes forward that, that like shared love that you were talking about, like it's in it, that love is built into the set. And I just, I think that's marvelous. It's really, really cool. Yeah. And like the little book, um, one of the designers, they added in um, sort of my name and the initials. I don't know if I've got, I don't know if that's quite. Oh, oh cool. yes. Uh, yeah. I think we just saw that. Oh yeah. We have the sticker right here. Yeah, um, so in there it's got the little initials. So um, it says Ben A, and then as you'll notice, the E's the wrong way round. Yeah, um, that's, that's great. Right. So that is that's wonderful. That's just wonderful. Well, I um, and you know, and I and I've seen a lot of um the ideas sets. You know, we've seen a lot of like really really cool idea sets, but I don't know that we have seen a a scene one where the um the fan designer had that kind of um i mean you know like that kind of ability to put in all of those little things and like nods to their family and 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 things like that and i just i think it's so wonderful that they were able to do that for you and and your family that's just terrific yeah, so then i I'm curious. So um, you've built other things in your dining room build space other than this set. Is it all like Star Destroyers or what do you, <laughs> what do you like to build? Um, various stuff, to be fair. Just just random things. Um, the little um, 
picnic under the flowers. Oh, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> um, what other bits have we got? This one was a speed build we had to do the other day on just a little. Uh, oh, yay. very cool. <laughs> and I know my little boy will be made up if I show this one. And that's one of my little boy's builds. Oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> just, just so he's not left out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, fun. Now, when it comes to just um, regular, like, well, regular, when it comes to Lego sets, now, are you, do you consider yourself more a mock builder or a set builder? Well, I do like sets, and I especially like all the dinosaur sets that they've brought out, and I'm pleased that they keep bringing out more because, um, yeah, so I do like the dinosaurs. I like a lot of, a lot of the um, idea sets. Um, so, yeah, but I don't really have a normal theme that I like to buy. It's just really what takes my fancy. And, um, yeah, I like a lot of the animals um, in some of the friend sets, the new um, sort of molds that they're making for the animals are just amazing, some of the um, – new ones that are coming out so um yeah so i it's a bit of a mix of both really yeah we're a big fans of the animals and especially those the ones that have been coming out in the friends cubes and they have like we have i think we have like five slots in rainbow colors which i'm <laughs> which i love and baby monkeys slots. and stuff baby slots so actually yeah we got some <laughs> we have some right here there's a little oh, there's monkey, a monkey lots of yeah we have a yellow monkey so, but yeah, those are, um, oh, ice sloth. Blue. Oh, it looks pretty bright, but that's yeah. an ice blue sloth, not a ball bearing. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a little out of focus. It was a little out of focus. <laughs> um, so, um, now do you, so I can only imagine that, um, a lot of people have been, um, have been reaching out to you since this all since this all began and i i know that you uh, like what you were saying um uh, about people being critical because you know it is the internet and people love to be critical but i have not seen one negative word about this set like everything i've seen has just been glowing which is um which is really which is really fantastic i'm so glad to see the the love out there for um for this now if you had is there a, a character uh <laughs> right if there was a a, a minifig character not christopher robin that you were really you know like kind of bummed that didn't make it into the set what would have been another character another poo character that would, would have been your next choice if they said ben we can add one more minifig to the to the collection what which one would you have chosen it would probably be owl i'd say um yeah owl Al would be my next one. He's sort of the next main character in line, I think. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed for a um, Al's house or something similar to that. So, um, yeah, that would be cool. I would love to see them make additional um, like add-ons to this set. I think yeah. that would be so. And I, Winnie the Pooh polybag. Yeah, somebody was saying earlier. Um, uh, I think Bubs and Lava Bat said Eeyore's house would have been a um, a great polybag set. Um, and seeing uh, to see some of the other characters and stuff. I, I would, of course, want to see Rabbit um, and uh, um, Kanga and Rue are adorable. Yeah, rabbit, rabbit's in it. Oh, yeah, Is Rabbit's it, in it. What am I yeah, saying? Rabbit. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, was, um, I meant, uh, uh, and I was Rue. talking about Kanga and Rue. I said Rabbit. I don't know. I, yeah. It's 11 here. I should be more <laughs> awake than this by now. Here, I'm just going to have some more coffee. That'll help. Mm. All right. Well, well, is there a big next? And you're like, oh, I got an idea. Now I got to, you know, do you have another big project or little project? Not really at the moment. I've been entering a few of the contests. They run um, sort of amazing little contests. I think the one last month was to um, sort of have your build over um, displayed in the Lego house. So I've been, yeah, enjoying sort of the little builds on that because that's sort of like a a fast little quick build that you can just sort of enjoy really and sort of submit so um, i've been entering through the contests but um the main ideas at the moment um not at the moment but i'm sure there will be um it's just well, done time with two children. 
Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. It's just making time with two children. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I am well, sure. sometimes, sometimes, you know, we've, we've built, um, when we go to conventions, we tend to build big things and take them to the convention. And sometimes it's nice to just noodle around a little bit mm -hmm. and play with Lego without, you know, like, ah, we have to work on this big project, which is always fun. But sometimes I'm just like, let's build a poly bag. <laughs> let's do something with instructions. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just want to be told what to what to build, like just put that piece there. I, we definitely had that. Uh, we had a period of time after Lego Masters. We were like, I don't want to build any mocks. Like, I can't. I am creatively tapped. I just need to let like, yeah, someone tell me what to build and I will build it. Um, so actually, I know you mentioned a little earlier about um, about building a lot of this out in uh, um uh, studio studio now when you know when you're normally building are you like a put the bricks in front of me kind of guy and i'll see what happens or are you more or do you do more of it digitally um i think if i'm building a larger build i tend to build digitally to start off with because um i'm just a sort of lack of resources really and then sort of finding the right part etc but um if it's a smaller build just a bit for fun etc then um necessarily or perhaps some um, yeah, just use the various Lego from behind me, sort of get out the different colours, etc. And um, yeah, just see what see what comes um to light really. So um yeah, I like a mix of both, to be fair. So um yeah. So if you build in studio, like if you build from your own collection, or at least I don't know about you, you look very organized, and the organized <laughs> part of our collection is very organized. Um, but we end up spending, we think, almost like 40 to 50 percent of our time searching for pieces, you know, and then what you trade when you do it in studio is, yay, I have my whole model. And then you have to wait for the orders to come in from Bricklink or <laughs> wherever. That must be. Did, did you have that experience on Winnie the Pooh? Were you waiting? Yeah. Like, no, I need this piece. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm sure from memory it was um the roof parts arrived um sort of first, and you're just like, no, we don't need the roof. We need the bottom bits first. And you're just like, <laughs> um, yeah, they're coming from miles away. And you're just like, no, I need that part. So um I think when we were building it, we were sort of substituting it with various colours just so that we could sort of get mm -hmm. the final the final model that the kids could play with with sort of various colours in it. So um yeah, I know I feel your pain. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Ilya mentioned um, when we spoke with oh, them green. Darn it. Um, that sometimes Lego designers start building in white so that they can just pay attention to the shapes and the forms. And, and of course, now they don't have a shortage of bricks, either. <laughs> <laughs> but that they, they really do that so that they don't get distracted by color initially and they can mold the, the shapes. Um, I don't, you know, I'm a, I'm a mere mortal. We don't have enough white bricks in all those, you know, to, <laughs> so I just dive in. If you, do you use um, BrickLink? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mostly yeah. domestically within the UK or do you go worldwide? Um, it depends a bit. I do, I do have to shop sort of, um, sort of Europe quite a bit because um, you'd be surprised at what parts the EU, um, the UK doesn't hold really. Um, so yeah, Bricklink's my main source. Um, Brick Owl as well sometimes. Um, but yeah, so I try to stick sort of um, UK because it um, comes quicker. Um, and then unfortunately, if you buy sort of from as far as field as you guys in America, you can be waiting sort of weeks for it. And you're just like, I just need that one part to arrive. And I'm All right. Yeah. Uh, I've definitely been there. A couple of commissions that I did. I was just like, please, just, get I just I have need to the ship. part to be here. I've got the due date. Um, so now when you, so when you when you built this initially, obviously, like you were saying, you didn't build this with the intention of putting it on ideas this was just something a fun right project for your family right yeah definitely that just to sort of yeah just really for us to play with to, for us to do the stories just for us to um yeah have fun with so um yeah, it's crazy that it's gone this far really <laughs> so so what was the so what was the push that got you to actually put it on on ideas like what was the was there like a particular person or just like it was a lot of people or what was the push that got you to put it there 
Yeah, I can't remember exactly who the different people were, but I shared the um, sort of original sort of studio photos that I've made. Um, and everyone was like, oh, that's really good. You should put it on ideas. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll pop it onto ideas while I'm waiting for the parts, etc., and while I'm ordering bits, etc." And so it was only sort of the, dig uh, the digital sort of renders that went onto ideas to start off with. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, so the ones you see on sort of the initial sort of profile are all sort of digital renders. So it was sort of quite early on, I put it on there while I was waiting for parts, really. Um, and it was, yeah, just after sort of several people had said, oh, you should share it um and um on ideas and so i did and um yeah very thankful that i did to be fair <laughs> <laughs> absolutely wow that was because i don't have the i'm i've you know we've built some things and people have been like oh you should put it on on ideas one of them was like the biggest thing that we've ever built and it included like two ev3 systems and like like eight motors and a bunch of sensors and it was like you couldn't afford to put this on <laughs> ideas and it's like way past the required piece count like there's no way that that would act actually happen oh that's a that's a good question um what um oh and here there is this question and you you can share this if you would like or not but just wondering what part of the uk that you're from uh suffolk so right on the east coast so, oh, there you um, go. Yeah. There you go. Um, and now I said that, and I forgot the question I was going to ask. Um, you were talking about numbers of parts. Oh yes. Yeah. So I know that um, there is a particular piece count that you have to be under for um, for ideas. And I have heard of some people having to kind of go in and adjust some things. Now, did you have any of that kind of feedback when you were first doing it? Did you actually have to significantly change anything about it to get it? To, to the right place for ideas? No, not at all. I think the piece count from memory is about 3,000 pieces, which is sort of fairly heavy. And um, my original build was only, I think it's about eight, 900 pieces. So um, sort of considerably sort of under that. So um, I was fairly lucky to be fair. It um, sort of met the criteria. Um, so it was literally just submitting it through. So um, yeah, so it was um, fairly easy to pop it on that. Cool. So Wilfred asked, and this is kind of in the same vein of that, but was there like when you decided you were going to put it up on ideas, was there anything that you went back and you were like, oh, I need to like tweak this or fix this before I before I actually like put it in front of people? Um, no, to be fair, because I never expected it to go that far, really. So it was kind of, <laughs> it was kind of put on there. Um, and then I expected sort of just to build it from a family. And if it made the sort of thousand um you get it sort of past the landmark is sort of the, the crucial point is the hundred then the thousand then the five hundred isn't then obviously the ten thousand so um if it had made a thousand i'd have been absolutely under over the moon and um yeah really grateful um so yeah Oh, that's uh, that's really great and you and so you didn't have to do and then you didn't have to do any tweaks on it once it was there like once it was up it was up and all was well that's great you have a very um you had a very, very smooth ride um, to, um, to where to, you know, excuse me, to the set being made. Then I've heard from some people who were just like, oh, and, you know, I had to change this and I had to go back and adjust this and change pieces. And it sounds like you ha um, had a very, uh, very fortunate circumstance there. That's great. Yeah, definitely. yeah, really lucky. And then I think I'd done sort of several updates as the parts started to arrive. I then sort of took photos. I added sort of the changes I made because um, you can probably imagine when you build digitally to when you're building in actual bricks, um, things slightly change. Um, something that you thought might fit together doesn't actually look quite right when you're sort of building it in bricks. Um, oh, so yes. Yeah. So you order the parts, don't you, on Bricklink? So you think you've got it. You buy all your from your studio. You take it over into Bricklink. You buy all the parts, and then when it arrives, you're like, ah, it's too big or it's too small, <laughs> and you're waiting for more parts to arrive. So um, yeah. You mentioned um, you mentioned a difference between your original set and when um, Lego made the 18 plus set was yeah. um, the parts usage, like the techniques they used. I noticed yeah. two of them that I hadn't seen done before at all. And, and I'm curious um, if these, you know, where these came into the set. And one of them is the use of green coral pieces um, coral. for the tree branches. The, the, I hadn't even seen the coral in, in green before, but sticking those leaves on it is just great. 
Yeah, that's um, one of the clever designers that I work with, Elias, is that was their, that sort of their ideas, that sort of a unique idea that they came up with. Um, I think the fact is when I was talking to him, he just wanted something a bit different, really. He wanted the tree to look a bit different to other trees that had been made and to give it that sort of Disney element, that sort of cartoony element. So, um, yeah, I think he just wanted it to be slightly different. And, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's come out all right. It's come out really well. The other one that, that really stood out to me, and I'd be interested to see what this looks like in your original model, is for the um, for the campfire, the um, the use of a Travis brick with four little brown macaronis around it to be crossed logs with the flame on it. Did you have a similar, not that that build style, but did you have that element in your no, build? No, the campfire is sort of an addition to this sort of final set, really. So that's sort of a new sort of addition to it. I um, made a little log for Pooh to sit on, but um, yeah, no campfire. So um and were you up in arms? There will be no campfire. <laughs> <laughs> You're ruining my vision with your campfire. Somehow I don't imagine Ben having that sort of outburst. <laughs> no, in it, the it, short time that we've known you. <laughs> it just seems like it was a really wonderful interaction between two designers who had different goals in the piece that they were making. Yeah, definitely that. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I was really pleased with how he sort of took my vision or how all the designers, because it was sort of a team effort, really, and how they took my vision and sort of my sort of passion and then took it mm -hmm. into the final set. So I was really sort of pleased at how they've sort of the final sets come out, to be fair. No, I don't know if um, no, I don't know if you, you know this or not, but I'm just curious, were there like certain parts of it that each of these designers worked on like would it have been like okay this person is working on the house so you'll talk to them about the house part this person's working mm. on the tree part so you're going to talk to them about the tree part was it like that or was it more of a just like everybody had had something to say about all of it yeah so at the meetings or generally everyone would be there in regards to it but they'd have sort of their own project like Elia worked a lot on this sort of house the design etc but then you had like graphics designers there mm. um, you had model creators because you can probably imagine all the sort of new parts the new elements etc have got to be sort of sculptured so they were sort of um sort of artistic in that manner so sort of everyone brought something to the table really sort of something slightly different um because sort of lego ideas is made up from people um, from different parts of Lego. So I don't believe that um, Lego Ideas has an actual team. Um, you've got the sort of core management, etc. But then what they do is they get um, designers. So um, they um, sort of take designers from different areas, like I believe Elia's sort of area of expertise, sort of like Disney. Um, mm -hmm. So um, they get the designers from the different areas of Lego, which all come together to sort of make that mm -hmm. set and they work on just that project sort of on Lego Ideas. Oh, I, I'm I'm so curious. You mentioned um, that a graphic designer was part of the team, and we're very interested in graphic design at Lego. What was that interaction like? So yeah, so you get the different sort of elements of it. Obviously, they work on like the stickers, um, and then obviously they work on instructions, and they talk to me with instructions about sort of what sort of picture I wanted in it, and sort of talk to me about sort of the um, sort of part where sort of I've had sort of my sort of input into what I'd like to say in the instructions. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, it's quite exciting. Well, was was that a different person than who dealt with the minifigures? Um, yeah, um, I can't quite recall who done what, to be fair. There was sort of a theme of, sort of five of us. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's different people and then sort of a different person worked on the instructions um and then obviously the box yeah that's like a whole project in itself did you make instructions for your original set or no no not not at all obviously you've got these sort of blueprints from the um sort of lego design software um mm -hmm. which can print out instructions but the actual sort of final set there is no instructions so yeah it's one of them ones when you carry it now, you don't want to drop it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, that that would be a scary part. So did you so you never shipped your original model there? They did you share with share the LDD file with them and they built it from that? 
Yeah, hundred percent. So I sent them, um, yeah, the original file. So I sent them back and I sent them um, loads of um, photos of sort of different elements, and then they talked to you on sort of, um, sort of on the online videos with sort of what part I'd done. You perhaps show them the different designs that you'd done on it. So um, yeah. Great. So you didn't have to sweat um, shipping that tree. Oh. <laughs> well, I can. T- I mean, I can tell you, we're gonna be we're. Well, I'm going to be showing something at the at the Lego house in um, next year in the Masterpiece Gallery. And we're going to have to build it here and ship it to Billund. And it's a year and a half away and I'm already having anxiety about it. I'm just like, <laughs> how, is that, how is this going to happen? I mean, fortunately, we have the advantage of knowing that it has to be shipped so we can you know hopefully build it to be you know to be shippable we're gonna make it modular you know we're gonna we're that's gonna, the plan we'll see we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it goes so um do you do you have um let's say, like do you have a project at all that you have in like rolling around in your head that you think like oh you know this could be um, this could be another really amazing Lego ideas thing. Or do you feel like, you know what? I've done it. I've made the model. I've done the Lego ideas thing. And now I can go back to building my, my own things again or, or what? Um, I don't know, to be fair. Um, I do like just generally building. So there's no pressure on it. So there's no, yeah, like time constraints. There's no, and like when I built this set, there was no pressure on it. It was just me building it or me sort of creating it. Um, for my children so there was no actual sort of pressure put on you so that is quite nice mm-hmm. to sort of do that and i'm sure one day i will submit it into sort of lego ideas different things that i make but um at the moment i'm just enjoying building little models with my children just um yeah just enjoying the sort of whole lego really it doesn't seem like a high stress situation you have going on over there <laughs> <laughs> so um and how how old are your kids if i may ask um, Elsie's three and Joshua's um, six. Oh, that's oh wonderful. And then, you know, and they're going to, again, they're going to grow up to be adults and have the, um, you know, and be able to be like, hey, <laughs> this is a thing that people are now paying, you know, a thousand dollars. See, by the time they're adults, three thousand dollars <laughs> still in the box for this Lego, for this Winnie <laughs> the Pooh Lego idea set. Now, I'm going to imagine that what's, I mean, like one of the, well, first of all, I don't know what lockdown is like for you guys right now, but have you been able to go into the store and see it on the shelf? No, unfortunately for us, because the um, shops have only just opened about a couple of weeks ago. So shops have literally only just started to open again. And our nearest store is a couple of hours away. Um, so, yeah, it's quite a trek to go to a nearest store at the moment. So not at the moment. So, um, yeah, when people have been sharing me photos of the um, display unit um, that they've got set up in the shops, I don't know if you've seen it, have you? Um, sort of standard display they've got with the, the wig, big sort of um, cardboard Winnie the Pooh behind the um, sort of display box. It, um, yeah, it looks amazing because, um, yeah, hopefully. We haven't gotten to see it. We haven't been – we've been to the store once, but it was prior to when it uh, when the set came out. And I've been – so I've just been calling around everywhere trying to – we're very, very fortunate that we live actually within, like, driving distance of three different Lego stores. Um, and so if that tells you anything about how hard it is to get, I tried. There were three <laughs> stores I could have gone to, and none of them had it and didn't know when they were – then when they were going to be getting more. And everybody that I talked to, and I even know the managers of some of these stores, and I can usually get them to like, set something nope. aside for me. And they were like, they sell out like the minute they hit the shelves, like they're gone. Yeah. So, and what I think is really cool about that is because not only are these going to be in in Lego stores, but I imagine they're going to be sold at the Disney parks as well. Do you know anything yeah. about that? Yeah, I don't, to be fair. No one sort of mentioned any of that. And that's not something sort of I've asked about. But um, from sort of past experience on things, it seems that um, they sit in these sort of Lego stores and on the Lego sort of online shop for about a couple of months, it looks. And then after that, they start going out to sort of other retailers. That sort of seems to be the norm. So, yeah, I guess so there. Um, yeah, it'd be quite exciting. My little boy has had his dream the whole time to be able to go to sort of a Lego shop and buy the set that sort of daddy's made. So that's something that... Um, He's definitely wanting to do so. Um, yeah, hopefully we can take him down to um, London and um, get the set one day. So um, yeah, the exciting times. 
Wow, that's that's, that's so awesome. cool. Well, and what a um, it was, you know, when we because mm. I know now like our season of Lego Masters is now showing in the UK, um, which is uh, surreal. So I can only imagine like that, you know, that's it's that sort of like um the long game right like it's not just that like lego made your set it's not just that it's going to be um out on lego store shelves but it's going to end up being on store shelves like everywhere and then in the disney parks where people are also going to buy it because they're going to see and that's one that's one of the great things about um the lego idea sets is they really seem to try and reach for not the typical Lego market, like not Mm. the typical person who, you know, like um, I think the ship in a bottle set is a really great example. Like that is a really cool piece that would appeal to people who aren't necessarily um, into Lego Lego, fans, right? Lego fans, like the same thing with the globe, like a really, really cool piece. And I think um, that this, uh, this, this definitely counts in that, in that column for me. I was just enjoying the idea that a kid in a Disney park holding a balloon could go in and get the Winnie the Pooh set while holding their balloon. <laughs> their little Mickey Mouse balloon <laughs> with their, their Pooh pin on. Yeah. <laughs> we we uh, this is a common uh, question for Lego fans. What is your favorite theme? Do you have a favorite theme or a set you're really excited about? Um, it's, yeah, it's probably dinosaurs. To be fair, oh, yeah, um, you so mentioned like, dinosaurs. I'm sorry. Yeah, so we've got all the um, original sort of Jurassic Park sets. So um, yeah, we regularly get them out and yeah, set them up in the dining room, mm-hmm. the living room, and um, yeah, love them. Love all the molds of the dinosaurs. Oh, when we went to um, just just before all of lockdown happened, right, like seconds before lockdown happened, seconds, we got to go to Bricks Cascade and um, it was an amazing experience. And there were a number of collaborative builds. And one of the biggest ones was a Jurassic World build yeah. that had um, at least one train going through it. All of the builders, all of the main builders of the set wore costumes like Jurassic Park um, Rangers. Ranger costumes. And ran around with walkie talkies. It was was a massive collaborative (laughs) build with scenes from the movie and so many dinosaurs. It was it was really it was really, really cool. I wish I want to show like I'm working on the foundation, but it's mostly green. So it's like you're not going to be able to see it. But I'm already um, I mean, first of all, I got to say, I think the um, the quarter round tile um, that 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 recently came out with the different um, uh, the dots sets and stuff has become one of the best pieces of the best of the new pieces available. You can do so much. um, uh, And I'm noticing while I'm putting together this base, it's almost like you can draw with tiles using, you know, using those curved edges much, and those much little curves. Right? Yeah. And it's just got such a, a wonderful cartoony bubbly uh, look to it that, uh, that I think suits this uh, really well. And I'm, what I'm really excited about, and again, we're not going to be able to see it because green, but um, this, well, you'll see it's, it's an invisible green, but this heart plate, which I'm a big fan of, Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that heart plate that I'm a really big fan of um, is in here several times in green, in bright green, which is really fun. We love um, we love little special parts like that. Yep. Uh, very good. You know, Ben, I actually, yeah, I'm sorry, here. I have a meeting I have to go to, so I'm going to have to say goodbye for now. And actually, but we are... Say- Oh, we're wrapping up, so that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Well, you want to hang out while we've just can you hang oh, out? Oh, I'm we happy wrap, to finish do wrapping that. up. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Well, um, and uh, I think Joel um, uh, puts it very nicely for uh, for for all of us. Um, it has been a lovely treat for for everybody. Thank you so much um, for joining us today and talking about your experiences with the set and um, and your time with your family. And it's just been such a a heartwarming um, 
fantastic story, the kind of stuff that we love talking about here on the show. So thank you so much. I think um, of the sets that I've seen, in addition to this being just a really fun set, and I loved seeing your original build as well. That was really cool. I think the Winnie the Pooh set wins the Heart Award. Yes. Right? <laughs> just from beginning to end, it's a project filled with love. I, I It's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank so... um. Thank you again. Um, we really, I know that you had some, a little bit of, uh, of trepidation at first when we first talked, cause you haven't really done a lot of live streams before, but we've got, uh, we've got such a great, um, group here and here, I'm just going to throw up some of the, mm -hmm. some of the comments here. Everybody's, uh, was just so thrilled that you've been here today. Um, wow. This is great. Look at that. Everybody's. <laughs> Thank Very you so cool. much. Yeah, I'm genuinely overwhelmed by it all. And um, yeah, without everyone's help and support, it definitely wouldn't have happened. So um, yeah, I just can't thank everyone enough, really. So um, yeah, you've made my dream come true, made my family's dream come true. So um, yeah, thank you. Awesome. It's been lovely chatting to you guys. Absolutely, it's been great chatting to you too. And uh, everybody, we will be. Um, uh, uh, as you know, we will be back on uh, Friday. Friday with our first work in progress workshop, checking about uh, checking out everybody's uh, uh, everybody's stuff, giving some constructive uh, critical feedback. And um, I uh, well, tech now we already text asking what your next project is. We already asked him, and he said uh, he's gonna he's just building small builds for right now. Nothing in the. Um, nothing like major in the in the pipe right so um well then enjoying lego is what it sounds exactly. like exactly well i'm going to i'm going to uh uh let you go ben so that we don't have to do so we're not doing like the end of our show while you have to sit there and listen to us enumerate the things that are coming up into the show <laughs> <laughs> in the coming uh, week so i'm um, hopefully you. We will be able to have you back again to talk about your next amazing Lego Ideas set that gets That's made right. into uh, into a set. So um, all the best to you all and right. your family. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank right. you. Bye. Thanks, Ben. Bye. Bye, Bye Ben. Bye. That was awesome. Wow, that was awesome, and he showed us original models. I know, and we got to see the original models. What a great, um, what a great guy. Thank you, um, everybody, for joining us today, hanging out. Uh, hearing Ben talk about his awesome model. Um, so and, much more to it than I would have originally thought. And I'm just so, it was so great to hear all those stories. And thanks everyone for making Tricky Lug a place um, where people want to come and hang out. And it's um, low stress and fun and we can talk about Lego. Absolutely. So um, yes, don't forget to join us on Friday at 10 a.m. We will be here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm trying to, sorry, get over to this thing here. Here we go. Uh, we, will, we will be here on Friday um, at 10 a.m. for that work in progress workshop. And then this Sunday, we'll have our regular Sunday show with our, our regular panel of guests, Moto, Holly, Cara, and Blair, and our special guest, Jake Studs, who will be here talking talking all about the new video figures and all that uh, good fun stuff. So we look forward to seeing you then. And don't forget until, uh, until next time, don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, wear your mask, get that vaccine as soon as you can. And we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Happy building.